Hello, I'm very pleased to discuss with you today megatrends in the German healthcare system and their influence on relevant stakeholders. My name is Christian Bayer and I'm a gynecologist by background. After many years at a German university hospital, most recently as a senior physician, I joined WMC Healthcare. There, as a senior project manager, I am responsible for the topics of medical strategy, digitalization and digital transformation. For many decades, there have been calls for the healthcare system in Germany to change in order to spend less. But despite many different governments, laws and other regulatory requirements, more and more money was spent. Even the introduction of DRGs in 2003 voluntary and 2004 mandatory did little to change this. It did, however, lead to steadily increasing pressure, especially on hospitals in Germany and for this reason there was an increasing number of insolvencies by the beginning of 2020. Insolvencies do lead to a shakeout of the extensive number of hospitals in Germany, but not always in the right place. For example, in structurally weak regions rather than in oversupplied cities. However, cost pressure alone was not responsible for the insolvencies, but rather a mixture of different megatrends that also influence future medical care. In addition to cost pressure, and the resulting drop in revenues, it was primarily process inefficiencies within hospitals that cost additional money. However, this is in line with an aging society, keyword demographic change and greater outpatientization demanded by politicians. Also, in order to save costs, as outpatient care is generally cheaper than inpatient care. And it's not just you who can watch this video at any time. Patients are also becoming better informed, more educated and want to be more involved in the treatment process. Complementing this are new technology developments. Who would have thought 20 years ago that smart watches could derive an easy G? However, such possibilities should then also lead directly to being paid for high quality rather than mass. One approach here could be to pay not only for the pure provision of services, but also to measure the outcome and to pay additionally for good results. However, this requires a lot of further research, especially the fast implementation of basic research results in healthcare delivery. In addition to translational research, major efforts are also needed in the area of digital transformation. For example, to optimize treatment and process flows by means of big data analysis. Even in the pre-pandemic years, there was an increased brain drain, especially in the nursing professions in Germany. And then came the pandemic. With an initial report on New Year's Eve 2019 of a new type of pneumonia in Wuhan, China, it caused an initial drop in the number of cases in hospitals of more than 30%, mainly due to the lockdown from March 2020. A brief recovery was followed by another slump of more than 20% in the months in the winter months of 2020-2021. In each case, this was more pronounced in the smaller hospitals than in maximum care hospitals, orange line versus blue line. In summary, however, this leads to only about 80% of the case number level of 2019 currently being achieved. As a result, the economic situation of hospitals is worsening because revenues are lower while expenses remain at least the same. Thus, COVID-19 is changing the hospital sector for good. It is likely that the case numbers of 2019 will no longer be achievable in the future, but will settle at a new level, which will lead to higher economic pressure. Complementary to this, 
The shortage of specialists means that nurse beds will continue to decline. This not only affected COVID patients, but of course all other patients, such as patients with heart attacks, strokes and oncological diseases. The legal and regulatory requirements already mentioned were only partially relaxed during the pandemic, but it is highly likely that these will be reinstated far faster than hospitals can recover. So what can be done? Digitization will become even more important. Process workflows must be simplified, especially to relieve employees and optimize process efficiencies. On the following slides, I would like to elaborate on these thoughts further. Over the years 2016 to 2020, the proportion of hospitals still reporting net income nearly halved, and the proportion of hospitals with net loss increased from 29% to 48%. From initial projections for 2021, it appears that significantly more hospitals will slip into the loss zone. This will also have a significant impact on the performance of the hospitals in the future as there are hardly any funds available for investments. What does the shortage of skilled workers, especially in nursing, mean in practical terms? Put simply, the sheer number of available beds used to be a decisive factor in how many patients you could treat. If a ward had 30 beds in the past, then, apart from exceptional cases such as infectious patients, for example, 30 patients could also be treated. Now, the same ward still has 30 beds, but there are only enough nurses for 20 beds. This means that 10 beds can no longer be used in the daily routine. This applies to many hospitals in Germany, because the quote from the hospital listed here is hard in a similar way in many places. In Germany, outpatient and inpatient service provision are still relatively strictly separated compared to other countries. But here too, driven not least by the pandemic, there has been an increase in the provision of outpatient services for previously inpatient cases. Some patients were simply worried about becoming infected in hospital and wanted outpatient care or postponed treatment altogether. I have brought you here an example of how we at WMC examine outpatient potential and previous hospital care in a region. There is significant outpatient potential in some specialities, for example 25% in my specialty gynecology which is shown on the x-axis. In addition, we examine the rate of hospitalization adjusted for age compared to the German average on the epsilon axis. Thus, in this case, briefening would be hospitalized significantly less often than the average. Thus, we quantify potentials and new opportunities for hospitals to engage in outpatient care as well. At the same time, however, this requires even better coordinated processes and digital transformation is particularly important. In summary, the pandemic has caused a change in the assessment of the megatrends and emphasized the importance of some of them more. To put it bluntly, the pandemic acted like a fire accelerator, cost pressure, Lack of qualified staff, demographics and outpatient care need quick responses and one of them is accelerated digital transformation to help hospitals and the healthcare system as a whole. Digital transformation will be one of the great challenges of the next few years because German hospitals have an MRAM score that is significantly below average in comparison with other European countries. Which means that digitization there is far below average. The government is now providing 4.3 billion euros for this, but this will probably not be enough to catch up with the other countries or to overtake them. 
but for everyone involved in healthcare, from patient to research, the digital transformation will bring about a chance that can increase the quality of treatment. For the patient, in addition to comfort participation in the sense of shared decision-making improves. Thanks to relief, employees can focus more on their core activities again and the hospital itself benefits from better economic results thanks to higher process efficiency. From the point of view of possible partners, for example payers or medtech manufacturers, the early integration into patient pathways offers new opportunities. This also applies to the research approaches and, last but not least, to teaching. This lecture alone would have been unusual 10 years ago and now it is our new normal in the actual time. In summary, the great challenges also offer great opportunities. If the health system succeeds in ensuring optimal working conditions and good further training, then the shortage of skilled workers can be made up for. A stronger focus on outpatient service provision can reduce declines in revenue and the digital transformation also opens up completely new possibilities for real intersexual care. For example, the dovetailing of outpatient and inpatient care and the integration of supplementary administrative and regulatory processes. If you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much for your attention and goodbye.